So number 16, it's uh, pretty easy to do because it's not really a 3x3 three three system. It looks like a 3x3 three three system, but in reality, uh, if you look at the middle equation, that already gives you an answer, okay? So if you were to focus in on negative 9q equals negative 27, and if you divide by negative 9, divide by negative 9, you're going to get an answer, q equals positive 3. That is an answer already, right? So what could I do with this answer of q equals 3? Well, I can't plug in q equals 3 up here because there's no q. But I could plug in q equals 3 right here where the q is at. So I want to plug it in. I want to take this 3 and plug it in right there. And it's going to say p minus 3 times 3 equals negative 8. So I really have p minus 9 equals negative 8. And if I add 9 to both sides, I want to have p equals 1. So ladies and gentlemen, I have my p value, I have my q value. What do I do now? I need to find my r value. So where's r at? Well, r is not here. It's not there. It's up here. So I need to plug in what? P right there. So I need to take the 1, take that 1, and plug it in right here. So it's really going to be, if I plug in 1 right there, it's going to be 1 plus 4R equals negative 7. And if you subtract 1 and subtract 1, you're going to have 4R, 4R equals negative 8. And if you divide by 4 on both sides, you're going to have R equals negative 2. So you have your three answers. If you look for the multiple choice answer on the final exam, it might be written as an ordered triple. So parentheses, and you have to put them in alphabetical order, PQR, all right? So it's 1, comma, 3, comma, negative 2. That's your ordered triple on 16A. And then 16B. 16b, um, it looks like a 3 by 3. Again, it is three equations, but there's not three variables. So bottom line is you want to get one letter to cancel so you could actually get an answer. Do you guys want to cancel out A's? Do you want to cancel out B's? Do you want to cancel out C's? Pick one. You could cancel out A's, but you'd have to modify it to cancel because if you just add them, you'd, you'd get 2A, right? The B's are already ready to cancel if you think about it. You guys want to cancel out B's? I mean, we could cancel out A's if you want, whatever you want. B's? Okay, let's go with B's. Now, what I want to first do is make it uh, lined up nicely. A plus B. I want to leave space for my C value equals 3. So all I did was rewrote this, but I left space for my C value. And I want to combine it with the second equation. So let me rewrite my second equation. It's uh, negative B plus C equals... 3 also, and notice that I don't have uh, an A value on my second equation, that's why there's a blank spot right there. Anyways, I am able to combine the lines, that's going to give me an A, the B's are going to cancel, that's going to give me a plus C, that's going to give me a 3 plus 3, which is 6. <clears throat> and ladies and gentlemen, this is a new equation that only has uh, A and C. So it might seem like we're not getting anywhere. But that's a new equation that says a plus c equals 6. Is there any other equation in my original one that also has an a and a c? Yeah, the third one. As a matter of fact, we already used these two. I need to go back and use the one I have not used. So how am I going to use this guy since I already have an a and a c right here, and I already have an a and a c on the one I haven't used? I'm just going to write it right there. It's going to be a plus 2c equals 10. Now, <clears throat> what do I have here, guys? I have a 2x2 two two system. So we're going to solve this 2x2 two two system. So I'm going gonna, gonna to ignore the rest, and I'm just going to work on this 2x2 two two system. How am I going to get something to cancel right there? Multiply what? A. I want the a's to cancel, so I'm going to multiply the top equation, multiply it by negative 1, and let's see what we get. We're going to get a negative a minus c equals negative 6. Isn't that right if I multiply everything by negative 1? 
on the bottom equation, I'm just going to rewrite it. It's going to be a plus 2c equals 10. And now I'm able to combine the lines. The a's cancel. I get a 1c, or just c, equals 4. And ladies and gentlemen, that's an answer right there. c equals 4. So we have c equals 4 right there. Now, remember, I'm, I'm pretending that this is just a 2 by 2. I got c equals 4. What do I do with this 4? What do I do with the 4 for c? Plug it in right here into c. You're going to substitute it to find a. So you're going to have a plus c, which is 4, equals 6. And, of course, if you subtract 4, subtract 4, you realize that a equals 2. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have two answers. You have A equals 2, C equals 4. All we need to do is find B. So, if we go back to the original, I need B. So, I'm not going to be able to use the bottom one because I need a B so I could solve for it. So, I don't have a B right here. I could either use this top one or this bottom one. Go ahead and pick one. Which one should I use? The top one? I mean, top one or middle one? Top one? Either one will work. So let's go with the top one. Instead of A plus B equals 3, I want to go A, which is 2. I want to put 2 plus B equals 3. So let me write that out. 2 plus B equals 3. And just looking at it, thinking about it, 2 plus what equals 3? 2 plus 1 equals 3. So we know that B has to be 1, right? So the ordered triple, the answer in... All three numbers together is going to be A, which is 2, B, which is 1, and C, which is 4. Jumping to 17A. Okay, so uh, the instructions tell us that these are the roots. These are the answers. Okay, so what we need to realize is that an answer is X equals 2 fifths. Yeah? And we also need to realize that X equals negative 3. They give you these two answers. I just wrote them with the x equals right in front. Now, why did I do that? Because if we remember how to solve quadratic equations, when you have a quadratic equation equal to 0, you're supposed to factor it, split it, and then solve them, and you get two answers. Now, knowing that I have two real answers, I could take these two answers and work it backwards. In other words, I could have a binomial here that equals 0 and a binomial over here that equals 0. Now, notice... Uh, right here, it doesn't say equals 0. It says negative 3. So if I were to add 3 and add 3, then I really would have the binomial x plus 3 equals 0. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay, now the other one, let's say I wanted to get rid of the 2 fifths. I want to get rid of the divided by 5 first by multiplying by 5, multiplying by 5. So I'm going to have a 5x in here, but then I'm also going to have to... Uh, get rid of that 2 by subtracting 2 on both sides. Does that make sense? I need to take this 2 and get rid of it by subtracting 2 to make it 0 and subtracting 2 on the other side also. So these two answers came from these binomials. Now, let's work it backwards and take both of these binomials and put them together and 1 equals 0 on this side. So I'm going to have a 5x minus 2 times x plus 3 equals 0. And now I'm just going to distribute 5x times x. That's uh, 5x squared. 5x times 3, that's 15x. Negative 2 times x, negative 2x. And negative 2 times 3, negative 6. And it is equal to 0. So the two middle terms, you could combine them. And that'll be a final answer of, let me write over here on the side, final answer of 5x squared uh, plus 13x minus 6 equals 0. Or you could have a y equals out here in the front. I'm not sure if they write the answer as the equation y equals 5x squared plus 13x minus 6 or 5x squared plus 13x minus 6 equals 0. Either way, that's how we get the equation when they give us the answers. Do we get it? 17b, so you have x equals negative 3 sevenths. So you have x equals negative 3 sevenths. 
and then you also have x equals 2. So these guys came from a binomial set equal to 0, from a binomial set equal to 0. So what is this binomial over here? This one's easy. What's that binomial? What is it? x minus 2. If you think about it, you don't want this 2, you want a 0. Okay, well then you'd have to subtract 2 and subtract 2, and that's how you would get the x minus 2 that we have inside of that parenthesis. Now how about this other one? You're going to have to multiply by 7 to cancel it out. Multiply by 7, you get 7x. Now you really have 7x equals minus 3. How do you get rid of the minus 3? By doing a plus 3 on both sides. So you do plus 3 to get rid of this one and plus 3 over here also. So it's going to be a plus 3 in there. I hope that makes sense. I know it's kind of ugly down here. I ran out of space. But now you could take both binomials and put them together and multiply and distribute. So you're going to have 7x plus 3 times x minus 2. And if you distribute, uh, you're going to have 7 times x, that's 7x squared. 7 times negative 2, that's negative 14x. And then 3 times x, that's positive 3x. And then 3 times negative 2, that's negative 6. And of course you could combine the middle terms the negative 14 and the plus 3. Final answer is going to be 7x squared minus 11x minus 6 equals 0. This is the equation that produces those two answers. Or it could also be written as y equals x squared minus 11x minus 6. 18a, I think everybody could do um, if you distribute the minus sign, it'll change to a negative 29 and a positive 12i. And then after that, you bring down the 17 and the 50i. And then you just combine like terms. Since complex numbers, you want the real number first. Go 17 minus 29. And you'll get negative 12. So you have negative 12. And then combine your uh, negative 50i with the positive 12i. And you're going to get a negative 38 I and that's your answer for that one so number 18 B it's just combining like terms just combine the nu numbers with the numbers and the eyes with the eyes 18 C that one's a little bit more fun because you get to distribute so if you distribute right there it's pretty easy 7 times 9 63 7 times 2 I that's positive 14 I negative 5 I times 9 that's negative 45 I and Negative 5i times positive 2i, that's negative 10i squared. Now, when you combine the 14i with the negative 45i, you're going to get 31i. So you're going to have 31i, and you're going to have a 63 in the front, and the negative 10 comes down with the i squared, but i squared is really a negative 1. So you really have right here positive 10. So you really have a plus 10 right here which you could combine with the positive 63. So your final answer is 73 plus 31i. Moving on to the last one, the most uh, interesting one, because you can't have imaginary numbers in the denominator. You're going to have to multiply by the complex conjugate. So first put it in parentheses. Now multiply by the complex conjugate, which is the same binomial with a different sign in the middle. And what you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. So you have 5 minus 8i up here also. And let's work on the bottom. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times negative 8i is negative 40i. Positive 8i times 5 is positive 40i. And last but not least, positive 8i times negative 8i is negative 64i squared. But remember, i squared, you're going to change to negative 1. Now, the middle terms, they do cancel out. One's positive, one's negative. They cancel out. So you really have 25 uh, minus 64 times negative 1. So that's really 25 minus a negative 64, which is 25 plus 64. So that answer is 89. And that's in the denominator. So my denominator answer is 89. And now all I need to do is find my numerator, which is 35 minus 56i, if you distribute the 7 to both, and then you have to split your answer. So we're going to have to write it like, like this, look. And that would be your final answer to that complex uh, problem.